Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint and today we're going to be talking about cuttings and making plants and trees from simple cuttings and using Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. What I have here in front of me is a green fig um, variety and let me show you. This year I started um, just a few weeks ago and you can take a look at the leaves. They've actually purposely been cut, which I'm going to show you why um, later on. You'll notice the perlite and vermiculite soil that I've created here and I've got this one cup inside the other cup. Hopefully you can actually um, zoom in on these roots. Do you see all of those roots that are in there? Again, this is only three weeks ago. And I'm actually gonna now try to see if I can pull it out so you can actually see the whole thing. Here it comes. Take a look at that. Just three weeks ago. So this here will be going into a larger pot today. So, let me show you how we did that here. So, to get started, I'm going to show you the um, potting, the potty mix that we use. And in preparing your potty mix, you're going to have to use something that um, is porous, something that will absorb water, and then something that will actually repel water and allow the, um, the water to drain through. And the two things to accomplish that are these two, um, these two products right here. The first one is perlite, and perlite is kind of like snow. I'll actually bring that to you again. If you take a look in here, this here is perlite. It's just white. And it basically um, repels water. It does not absorb water. It allows um, soil to become very well draining. Um, so that's perlite. As you can see here, it says improves drainage and aeration and potty mixes. So we've got perlite here. And then the second product we've got here is vermiculite. And then vermiculite says helps improve soil aeration and drainage, but it actually also absorbs water. And it's actually a little bit wet right now, um, as it's a little bit darker. So, what we would do is take pretty much one cup of perlite per one cup of vermiculite. And I've already done this earlier, and you can see here. And then you're just going to want to mix those two together to make your potting soil. So, we'll then take that and... I'm just going to take a plastic cup, as you saw earlier. I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm actually going to open a hole in it. I'm just cutting a couple holes to allow the water to come through, and you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm just cutting it. We're now going to add the soil mixture to the cup. So we fill that up near the top. And now we just got to pick a cutting. And you can see all the cuttings that we've done here is, um, this here is a passion fruit vine. And let me show you how cool the passion fruit is. I've actually got one flowering, but you can see the roots that are here through the cup. You can see the roots over there again. So here it's even coming out of the cup. So you can see in three weeks, you've got this beautiful passion fruit. We've done the same for um, a camellia. This is a, a pink variety camellia. So we've done some cuttings here. We've done another passion fruit. We've got an Oro Blanco grapefruit. And I've got another passion fruit. Take a look at these roots. Look at that. So we've got lots of passion fruit, and you'll see why in just a minute. And then I've got my Eureka lemon. So I don't want to say this works every single time, but sometimes it does fail. Um, but this here is another cutting that didn't make it. So, you know, I still hopefully give myself at least an A or even a B, but these are all free plants that were created by cutting. And let me show you how we're gonna actually accomplish this. The first thing I wanna show you is actually my passion fruit. I wanna show you how beautiful these flowers are. And most importantly, my children love the taste of the fruit. Come and take a look at the fruit. So here we are now approaching the passion fruit vine that I have here in the garden. And take a look at the flower. Take a look at how beautiful that is. And this is a purple passion. So that's that. And we're now gonna take a cutting. I'm gonna use this as an example. So we're just gonna to go to one of the ends over here and I'm basically gonna follow the stem down to the next closest leaf so I'm gonna cut it right like so and I'm gonna be about a quarter inch away from the leaf this is good cutting practices as well and what I've done here is I've allowed the plant to then grow so the juices and the waters are gonna continue to flow up the stem and go to this tip and that'll then continue the, to grow the vine and it looks like it's even got a flower on that end. Um, it's pretty small right now, but it'll turn into, right here is the flower, right there. 
So it'll continue to grow off of that tip, but I'm not gonna take this cutting and show you what we're gonna do with that. Come and follow me. So here's um, a fig tree. I actually got this from my grandpa Saman's house about two to three years ago. Every single leaf has got a fruit. Let me show you here. So we know that it's a good variety. It's actually been in the family for at least three, if not four decades. Um, just being propagated by cuttings. If you allow the seeds to mature, you'll actually, just like children, you don't know what it's gonna become. If it's gonna bear larger fruit, if you're lucky, it could be smaller, it could be fruitless, it could be anything. So pretty much throughout every single leaf, another fruit. Take a look. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make another cutting. So I'm trying to select a branch here. And just to let you know, for the last cutting I made, which was right here, Right here, that fig that you saw early in the video came off of this tip. We cut it again about a quarter inch away from the nearest bud, and now that bud's growing and making the new branch. But we're now gonna go and select this branch off to my right. And again, I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna find the nearest leaf. I'm gonna go about a quarter inch above it and cut at an angle. And this bud, which we don't see yet, but it'll eventually bud right in there and create a new branch to continue the branch. So we're now going to take this cutting here and we're going to turn that into more figs. Follow me. So here we are now. I've got two cuttings. We've got the fig tree and we've got the passion fruit vine. And this applies to citrus, um, camellias as you saw earlier. It applies to anything. Um, but let's start off with this fig. First tip is get rid of the softer and the younger tissues which are on the growing tip. So we're gonna cut it down a few leaves lower. I'm gonna take it down to this point over here and remove it. Again, I've cut it about a about a quarter inch above that stem. We're then gonna go down and select where we want it to root. And to decide where the root's gonna come out, we gotta follow the nodules. And the nodules are basically where the leaves are coming out. If you take a look, I'll come a little closer so you can see this. So if you can zoom in here, you can see this is node number one, node number two, node number three, node number four, node number five, six, and seven. And you wanna make sure you basically leave just a quarter inch above the node. And this is, you can see a fig coming out, but it hopefully shouldn't fig. And if this, and if it does actually go into fruiting, be sure to remove it. You want all of the plant's energy to go into rooting and leafing. So we're just gonna go down three to four nodes. I'm gonna count number four. I'm now gonna cut right below it. So what you're imagining is the roots are gonna come out of that node. If you cut it right in the middle, it's gonna be a little bit harder for the plant to do it, but it's possible. But most of the roots come out of the node. So we're gonna remove this leaf because it's gonna be below soil level. This leaf is too close to soil level. And now with these last two leaves, what we're gonna do is just cut them in half. And by doing so, we've actually reduced the amount of um, perspiration by 50% and that is the plant giving off water through its leaves so we've reduced that by 50% by cutting the leaf in half now also have the nodule to the top and then the nodule towards the bottom which is where we're expecting the rooting the next step we're gonna do is to score the plant just a little bit um, and this here is actually gonna increase water absorption for the plant and actually is usually the site where most of the roots will come out so we've done this to also um, accomplish those two things. Increase water absorption, it's also gonna help be a site for root production. And now what we're gonna do is dip it in a rooting hormone. So this here is the product I've got here. It's made by Schultz, it doesn't have to be, but take root. The primary ingredient in this says it's um, indole-3-butric acid, and it's only 0.1% of this entire um, product is the active ingredient, but what it does is it stimulates root production, and it also is antifungal, because one of the issues with rooting, um, making cuttings, is fungus, and this here is actually gonna protect it. So if, this is all you're gonna want on there. Hopefully you can zoom in in there, and you can see the white powder that's on there. So just lightly coated, and then we're gonna stick it into our perlite and vermiculite solution. So we've done, done that. And then we're gonna take our other cup, and because we actually put all those holes at the bottom, that's gonna drain into this cup. And I'm just gonna water it now to the point that I actually see the water coming up halfway up the cup. 
So if you take a look here, hopefully I'm gonna get this done right. So I'm adding the water. I can see it getting darker. Now the water drops are at the bottom. I wanna to try to go up a little ways, but not flood the entire plant. But you usually wanna keep just the bottom half an inch moist and keep it moist every couple of days. So we just got the water at the bottom and now we know that it's, it's wet. The last step that we're gonna do here is I've got this spray bottle over here and I've got my Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. If you take a look here, it says Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. Just add water. It's a natural tree trunk barrier from damaging sunburn insects and rodents. And what this does is I'm basically creating a sunblock to also minimize further perspiration of the plant. So we're gonna just take a teaspoon of this white organic paint and put that into the spray bottle. And then we're just gonna spray the leaves. If you take a look over here, you can actually see what it looks like right here. Here we just sprayed the leaves and it's now got a coat of white that'll actually keep it um, from drying out even further. Another thing to consider doing when making your cuttings is putting your cuttings here in a window that receives morning sun. And what I've got here is my fig tree that we just did the cutting on and I just take um, my water bottle and at least three to five times throughout the day, I'll just Spray the leaves, and if I notice that it needs a little bit of water, I can even water the top of the soil. And again, this is just pure, clean water. Anyways, I hope you found this video helpful, and if so, be sure to like it, and most importantly, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on all of our other Ivy Organics 3-in-1 educational gardening videos. Thank you, and happy gardening.